Adobe Photoshop offers all the tools you need for professional photo retouching, image editing, and color painting. Projects in Adobe Photoshop can begin with scanned images, stock digital art, or can be created from scratch by a drawing or painting program. This composite image, for example, was created from three separate files. Once you bring an image into Photoshop, you can combine it with other images, as well as paint, edit, and modify it in a variety of ways. As the first step in moving or modifying part of an image, you select the area you want to affect. Here, I'll use the elliptical marquee tool to select the CD and move it to a new file. Now I can use the transformation commands to rotate, resize, and move the CD. The magic wand tool lets you select areas that are similar in color. Here, I'll click once to select most of the background. I'll now choose the similar command to select the rest of the background. And to select the horn, I simply choose inverse. Now I can move the horn into the same file with the CD and position it where I want. Photoshop also includes tools to help you easily select more complex objects. For example, I can use the magnetic lasso to select this violin. The tool finds the edge for me while I trace over the image. By using the layers palette, you can organize and edit images on separate, transparent layers. Clicking in the eye column next to a layer lets you hide and display layers. You can also change the order of layers by dragging them in the palette. Here, I'll move the horn down by dragging layer 2. When I make layer 1 the active layer, my changes affect only the artwork on that layer. I can now move the CD separately from art on other layers. Similarly, when I change the opacity of layer 1, only the CD becomes transparent. In addition to changing opacity, you can apply different blending modes to a layer to create special effects. You can also add text to an image on its own type layer. I'll now add some text by clicking the image with the type tool. Next, I'll select the font, point size, and alignment. Enter the text and choose the type's color. You can also change the settings for individual words or letters on your type layer. For example, I'll now change the point size of the second line of text. If you want to further enhance the look of a layer, you can apply special layer effects. Here, I'll add a drop shadow and inner bevel to give the text a 3D effect. You can also go back later and change your text by double-clicking the layer. Notice how the layer effects track the new word as I type it. Other striking effects can be applied using Photoshop's large collection of filters. You can completely transform an image by applying several different filters that range from image correction to stylized paint effects. To add color to your art, you can use the Photoshop painting tools. You can choose colors in a variety of ways, by using color swatches or the color picker, or by sampling color from existing art. You can then select a painting tool, along with a brush and paint options. Once you choose your painting tool and options, you can paint.
If you don't care for the results of something you try in Photoshop, you can undo your work through the History palette. Now I'll use the History palette to remove my brush strokes and back up to the last filter I applied. Another way to paint in Photoshop is to apply a gradient blend of colors to an image. After choosing the gradient tool, I'll pick my starting color, the type of gradient I want, and then I'll simply drag to apply the gradient. Photoshop also provides a full range of retouching tools for color and tonal correction. For simple tonal adjustments, like the one needed for the horn, I can set the basic contrast range with the Levels command. To make the horn more red, I can adjust the color with the Color Balance command. Notice the scratch on the horn. To fix it, I'll use the rubber stamp tool to sample part of the unscratched area, and then paint over the scratch with the sample. Finally, to save time, you can use the Photoshop Actions palette to automate common tasks in a single command. Here, I'll run an action that adds a vignette effect to the image. Once you've finished with your artwork, you can save a copy of the file in a variety of formats, depending on how you plan to use the art. For instance, you might save the file in EPS for printed output, or JPEG for use on a web page. This online tour has shown just some of the possibilities available to you with Adobe Photoshop. To explore Photoshop on your own, see the companion tour in the user guide. For more information, you can also view the other movies and try the step-by-step -step tutorials.